Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2016 Bangkok, Thailand. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today, Mr. Peter Lyons, who is the community lead for ICT's the World Economic Forum. Peter, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about digital economy. Is the digital economy a reality? I think that's a good question. I think the better question might be, is reality becoming digital and what does it mean for the economy? And I think we can see this illustrated in our day-to-day -day lives when we see people walking down the street texting and, and, and immersed in, in, a, in, a, in a virtual uh, digital environment, which happens to be their smartphone, for example, or maybe they're listening to music. And I think we're going to see increasing digitalization mean that people are increasingly living in this parallel reality. And, and you know this will have ultimately uh, implications for the grounded reality, the real economy, and it's something that we're working hard with our various stakeholders to try to address. And what are the main barriers, in your opinion, to growth, and how can the World Economic Forum contribute to overcoming them? I would say uh, number one is, is, is trust. Trust in the digital uh, economy, trust in the digital world, trust in the outcomes that, that this digital world will, will deliver. I think that uh, trust has many facets, everything from cybersecurity and cyber resilience to you know, what are the ultimate uh, socioeconomic uh, goals that we have and how do we ensure that the, va the value generated from the digital world is spread evenly among participants. Now the UN sustainable goals have been attracting a lot of attention. I wanted to find out what role is WEF playing in meeting those? So the World Economic Forum has organized itself um, to address uh, these challenges by shifting from a industry-focused approach to, uh, to addressing uh, uh, systemic change to actually shifting into a systems-based approach to address systemic change. We've organized ourselves according to 15, 14 systems initiatives everything from the future of the digital economy and society to shaping the future of agriculture and food security, long-term investment infrastructure, uh, financial and monetary systems. All of these systems are meant to bring people from across industries to work on issues that are no longer siloed industry issues to deal with. So it's about bringing the industry experts from across industries, bringing the civil society bringing academia, bringing governments, and the private sector, of course, to try and work through some of these challenges. What about collaborative regulation? How do you think it can contribute to growth? Well, again, if we think about traditional industry silos as, as starting to uh, blur, and for example, if we look at the, uh, the self-driving, assisted driving uh, future of, of, of vehicles, uh, those are no longer issues that are dealt with in the automotive industry, for example. But they're no longer even just issues dealt with by ICT. You have to bring in the insurance, you have to bring in governments, the regulation, and of course the technology side and the, the, the vehicles and the vehicle manufacturers and all the ecosystem that supports all of that. So to, to address these kind of uh, increasingly complex and interconnected issues means that you're talking about bringing regulators from what were previously very uh, focused mandates around industries. Um, how do you do that? Well, I think in some cases it's, uh, what you need to do is change the way that the regulatory authorities uh, function within the government and, and you know what are the reporting lines and you know what's the institutional independence of the regulatory authority. If you have a regulatory authority that's cross sector, how does that regulatory authority function institutionally? How is it how is it funded? You know, all of these things are, are issues that governments have to wrestle with, but they need to wrestle with it in consultation, in collaboration with industry. Now, I'm sure you're no stranger to events that bring together highly influential people. We're here at ITU Telecom World 2016. I wanted to find out, in your opinion, what uh, value has this event got? Well, I've been coming to ITU Telecom World and, and other ITU events for some years, and I've always found it a good place to, to connect with, with old friends, but also to, to meet new people and, and just get a sense of where governments are are. are, are are leaning towards in, in, in terms of 
you know, ICT and policy and regulation, it's a good way to measure the pulse of, of the industry from the perspective of the governments and the regulators. And increasingly, you have industry participants as well here for the same reason. And I think for the World Economic Forum, it's always great for us to be in a place where you can sort of pressure test new ideas and, and you know, really try to bring people into these discussions and take these discussions to Davos and to beyond. Peter Lyons, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.